Hey everyone, I am coming to you today from literally behind the scenes here at Evolution. This is behind the curtain, behind um, the window display. Uh, so this is obviously an area that customers don't get to go into. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about what we have going on with our summer window display. And hopefully it'll entice you to come out and enjoy the beautiful weather and stop by and see us. Let me turn this around. Yeah, so um, first of all, you're gonna see that we have some beautiful posters on the back here. Um, these are sunflowers, and this is part of our German botanical educational print line. So these are sunflowers over here, very summery. We also have our citrus fruit poster over here from the same line. And I really love being able to see them in the sun like this. You can tell the backing, it's like it looks black, but in the right light, it almost looks like a dark navy. So that's kind of nice too. Um, and they're just so beautifully illustrated. They would make any space beautiful. Otherwise, we have our cave bear. Now he's a little hard to move, so we don't tend to move him out of the window display. So no matter the season, you're likely to see him hanging out here. We have our new zebra, which I think I featured in a previous video. He's also pretty big, so we had to put him in the window. We have our Vogandy globe, which I believe I featured in a previous episode. These are very cool, um, historically inspired globes. And um, we have on the table a bunch of stuff which I will go over with you guys. And then down here, we have a very cool piece of sandstone. Let me get back so you can see it. So this is a really large piece. Um, you can see it was not very easy necessarily getting it back here. It's pretty heavy to drag, but it's very beautiful and it has two holes in it, which is kind of unusual. A lot of times you just see one. And um, I did an episode on sandstone previously, and basically these holes are caused by natural erosion, um, of water going through and ice forming and then melting and then creating these cavities. So that's kind of cool. And then we have these narwhal tusks. So you may be familiar with the animal, the narwhal. It's a marine creature, and they have these enormous sort of like unicorn-like horns that grow out of the tops of their heads. And um, these are some replica narwhal tusks. They're absolutely beautiful, they're super dreamy. And over here on the table, we have a small collection of things. We have a big space here, which I will show you what I'm gonna fill that with in a minute. Um, but in the meantime, we started off with some, we have a malachite sphere, and this is very, very heavy, very dense, and incredibly beautiful. I picked this because I loved the swirly patterns. It reminded me of the sea. Um, I thought it was perfect for summer. We have a fluorite sphere. And fluorite is a really interesting mineral because it comes in these different shades. Sometimes it can be quite green and other times it can be purple. And then when you're lucky, you get a piece like this where you can see shades of green and purple and white all in the same piece. So that's very cool. Um, this is sardonyx. Again, I really loved the wavy details. These almost look kind of like thumbprints in certain areas. So this is a sardonyx sphere. Very cool as well. That is the fossil sea urchin that I believe um, Robbie uh, told you about last time. We also have a fossil sand dollar, right? So you come across sand dollars on the beach sometimes. Well, this is a really ancient life form. It's been around forever. And this is a fossil sand dollar, which looks remarkably like the sand dollars you see today. It's just, you know, it's fossilized now. It's completely hardened into stone. And it's um, very cool. Feels really nice in the hand. So those are great. Otherwise, we have the, we have two shells here, two pointy shells the um, Episcopal miter and the Papal miter. And I confess, I'm not sure which is which. I 
I'm sure we will link to the correct products uh, in the description, but one of these is the Episcopal Miter and the other one is the Papal Miter. And I'm not sure why they're called that, but they both sound very Catholic. So <laughs> maybe it has something to do with that. I think maybe it has something to do with maybe the Pope's hat or, you know, something like that, or is it Cardinal's, you know, uh, get ups or something like that. It might have something to do with that. This is a pear triton. Um, and I'm not, I guess it kind of looks like a pear in the right sort of angle. It might look like that. Um, but it's a very beautiful, very detailed shell. It has lots of really interesting textures to it. And this is a red abalone. So abalone, um, I believe is eaten in many parts of the world. It's kind of like oysters or clams or mussels or something like that. It's definitely edible. And this is a red abalone. And on the inside, you can see it's even more fabulous. So I was debating how to display this because I want people to be able to see the inside, of course, but um, I think the outside is really cool too. So I was a little, little torn on whether I should do that right side up or upside down. And then over here, we have some starfish. This is a pillow starfish, which you may not have seen before. It's very unusual. And um, it is just, it looks just like a pillow, like a pillow you would have on your couch or something like that. And it is um, really interesting and kind of light. And I really love the texture on this. It looks like it's made up of tiny little starfish. It's like a starfishes on top of starfishes. Um, very interesting, very interesting texture and pattern. And on the bottom, it almost looks like snake skin or something like that. Really weird. Good stuff. Really like my, uh, my pillow starfish. I always make sure we get a bunch of those every time we go on our buying trips because I think these are really, really unusual. We have some more common starfish over here. Knobby starfish and spiny starfish. And um, they're pretty descriptive of their names, right? So knobby starfish has these little knobs on it and the spiny ones have these little tiny spiny spikes all over them. Um, and we definitely have a lot of these in stock, so check those out if you're interested. And then on this side, we have something very unusual. I'll turn it around so you can get a better look. Now, by looking at this, you might not be able to guess what it is. It is pretty unusual. I'll get a little closer so you can see the texture differences. So this here is rough, this is shiny and smooth over here. And then you have this beautiful banded material over here. And um, I can tell you that this is actually a slice of a water pipe that's about 100 years old that contains, you know, um, decades and decades of accumulation inside the water pipe. And so they took this water pipe and they sliced it up into a million slices and now they sell them as decorative objects. And this buildup here, this, these deposits are aragonite. So aragonite is a type of mineral deposit that um, accumulated in this particular section of the pipe. And so it's just this awesome thing to look at and it's so unusual and doesn't, you know, doesn't look like a piece of infrastructure, but that's actually what it is. It's a piece of plumbing, um, but it's worthy of display. So that's a very cool item. We have a pyrite sphere. Pyrite is also awesome. This, I love pyrite spheres in particular because I think they look like the Death Star um, under construction. And it looks um, super shiny. They have great weight to them. And um, they are really, really fun to look at. Super, super shiny. You get a lot of bang for your shiny buck with, uh, with pyrite. And then finally here we have a calcite sphere. So I'm not even gonna try to pick this up because it's extremely heavy. Um, calcite is one of those minerals that comes in different colors as well. Sometimes you can get blue calcite, orange calcite. I've seen yellow calcite, I've seen green calcite. So it's one of those minerals that's really dependent on kind of where it forms and what impurities are in the earth around it that give it its color. So usually when you have orange and red colors and pink, the impurities are due to iron, um, right? Because iron 
rust has that kind of reddish texture to that you know reddish tint to it so um, I'd have to do some more research and see if that's what is in calcite but I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case and then finally I wanted to take you outside so you can see what's under the table so it's gonna get loud for a minute um, and then I'll sign off but I thought it was worth showing you We have a giant crab under our table. It's in a frame, a wooden frame, and it was done by our uh, fabrication department. Uh, and is this is a monster beast? Very cool, super spiky, super scary, very awesome. And then you'll see I have this big hole on the table. What am I planning on putting there? Well, I will tell you. I am gonna be putting this crab, even bigger crab, on that table. And I am just going to need a hand to take it down. So, because it is quite large, as you can see. And I was not quite confident that I could do it by myself yesterday, so I wasn't able to take it down. But hopefully within the next day or two, I'll be able to get some help and we will get it down onto the table so everyone passing by can see it and hopefully we'll draw you into the store. So there is a look at our summer window display so far. Um, and I hope you enjoy learning about some of these items and that you come down and visit us. All right, thank you, bye.